Hello and welcome to Abundant Life Christian Center Church Service Online. We are so happy to have you. Please share this link with your friends and your family so they can all take in on this experience of faith, favor, and of fellowship. Enjoy the service. Hallelujah. Just go ahead and reflect on all God has done for you this week. Just go ahead and begin to, to thank him, just to adore him, just to worship him for everything that he's done, for everything that he's done, for just being the awesome God that he is. Hallelujah. Can I hear someone lift up a praise this morning? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are awesome, God. You are worthy. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, we glorify you this morning, Lord. We tell you thanks, mighty God, for bringing us here in your presence one more time, one more Sunday, just to lift you up, just to exalt you, just to tell you of the good, awesome God that you are. Father, even now, mighty God, as we're about to begin service, Lord, I pray, Lord, that you would come. Let your presence, mighty God, be felt in this place like never before, Lord God. Father, pour out your spirit upon us afresh, dear Jesus. Father, even as we have put aside this time, mighty God, to come and to fellowship with you, mighty God, God, we declare, mighty God, that it shall not be in vain. Father, even as the choir comes, mighty God, breathe upon them, dear God. Set them afire again. Father, we place minister money before you even now, dear Jesus. And we thank you, mighty God, that the word that you've placed, the word that you've placed upon his heart, mighty God, for us this morning. Father, we thank you that you would, Father, that open our hearts, dear Jesus, that we might receive, that it might find good ground, mighty God, to grow upon. We give you glory and honor even now, Jesus, and we tell you thanks for everything that you're going to do, for everything that that you've done. In Jesus' name I pray. And we all say Amen. Amen. Please put your hands together and make welcome the G4C Choir. Happy Sunday everybody. How's everybody doing? Come on, tell your neighbor welcome into the presence of the Lord. We are thankful for everything that God has done. Come on, find a neighbor and tell them I am thankful for everything that God has done. Come on, we're going to praise God. The way that G4C knows how to praise God, give him thanks for everything that he has done. Wandering into the night, wanting a place to hide this weary soul. This bag of bone And I tried to go my mind But I just can't win the fight I'm slowly drifting Oh, vagabond And just when I ran out on the road I met a man I didn't know And he told me that I not alone. He picked me up, turned me around, placed my feet on solid ground. I think, I think Savior, because he healed my heart, he changed my name. Oh, my God. 
if you believe that, just sing it out. He won't, come on, he won't fail. He'll never leave you. Come on, just sing it out. Come on, say, he won't, he won't. If you believe it, come on, sing it. He won't. somebody's going through something really tough and you're beginning to lose faith in God but let me tell you something the same God that he was yesterday is the same God he is today he will never fail you he will never leave you I don't know what you need but God is here to give it to you come on and raise your hand in expectation because you know that he won't fail you know he won't leave you he will never fail you he will never forsake you hey he won't fail Christ is my firm foundation. He's the rock, the rock on which I stand. When everything around me shakes, I've never been more glad. I put my, I put my faith in Jesus. He's never let me. He's never let me. He's faithful through. Come on, worship that with some strength. Come on, this place. 
Christ is my firm foundation. He's the rock that I'll stand on. Christ is my firm foundation. He's the rock, the rock on which I stand. When everything around me. Spirit, like you believe it. I put my faith in Jesus. He's never let me down. Come on. I put my faith in Jesus. Come on, let the faith arise. on this altar. The Bible says in Isaiah 7, 9, unless your faith stands firm, I cannot make you stand firm. And we understand that he won't fail as long as we stay and put our faith in him. As long as I don't allow my faith to fail, I will see that he will never fail. As long as I continue to hold on to what he has said for me, I will eventually see at the end of it all that he has not failed. What I want us to pray today for is strength is strength. You can go to God and receive strength for your situation, strength for your today, strength for your tomorrow. For Daniel, he was strengthened by the angel of God when he was in God's presence. I want you to go ahead and pray, God, strengthen me where I am weak today. Strengthen me where I am weary today. I know that you cannot fail. God, I know that you're here with me, that you are my foundation. But Lord, I need strength. I need new strength today. Somebody's leaving with new strength today. Somebody's leaving with new strength right now. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and seek out to God in this place. Yes, Father. Yes, let strength hit your people today, O oh Lord. In the name of Jesus, Father, where it is desired, where it is needed for you to show up, where it is desired, where it is needed for you to step in, O oh God, let me receive strength in this place. Yes, Lord, we praise you, O God. Come on, pray, pray, pray. Receive from him now. Hear me. I, I, I want those who are, are, are if it seems like there's a situation that you that seems impossible for you that you've been facing for some time now i want you to come up to the altar and give it to god in this place it's something where you're like listen strength has been failing me doctors have been failing me my own strength has been failing me go and take your own position and receive strength from god to finish that journey in that story Come on, I want you to cry out to God tonight. Bible today, Bible says the joy of the Lord is your strength. Don't leave this altar till you're leaving with God's joy. Do not leave this altar till you're leaving with God's joy. Come on, pray, pray, pray. Pray, pray, pray. My anchor to the ground. My hope and firm foundation, he'll never let me down. He'll never let me down. 
Ramanda. Father, as your children are here today, oh Lord, Father, divine strength, let your angel renew their strength now. Let your angels renew their strength now. Let your angels renew their strength now. Divine strength, divine strength in this place. Come on, pray, pray, pray. Pray, pray, pray. Pray, pray, pray. So go to Ramanda. When Hannah came to the to the temple, she released what she needed from God. She left it there at the altar. Leave it today at the altar right now.
Thank you, Lord, for your shift and move in this place today. Lord, there are stories laid on your altar today. God, I pray that they return as testimonies in the name of Jesus. Father, where strength was needed, God, strength has been received today in the name of Jesus. Lord, your word says the joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Father, for everyone who needed it today, may they leave here with joy. May they leave here with joy, knowing it is settled, knowing it is done, Father. We thank you, King of glory. We give you praise. Come on, stand and give him praise in this place. It is done. Come on, give him a shout of praise. So prana gadeske. Ah, so prana gadosko. So prana gadeske. Worship him, worship him, worship him. Father, we thank you, Lord. God, we give you all the glory and the honor. We worship you in this place. Father, as you have already moved and shifted, God, continue to breathe upon us afresh, O oh Lord. Father, I thank you for your joy and grace and rest that's always made present for us. God, I pray that everyone here steps into that rest and receives fresh fire from you, O oh God. Breathe upon this fresh your word, O oh Lord. Come on, look to Jesus in this place. Look to him in this place. Let him settle your heart right now. Let him settle your heart right now. Yes, Lord, we praise you. Thank you, O oh God, for this done, O oh Jesus. We praise you. Free with us afresh, oh God. For in Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we worship. G4C, give him a shout of praise. Oh, come on, give him a shout of praise. Oh, come on, give him a shout of praise. Oh, come on, give him a shout of praise. Oh, come on, give him a shout of praise. Amen, amen, amen. Listen, greet a neighbor or two and take your seats. Uh, greet a neighbor or two and take your seats. God is moving. I'm excited. And Lord, we are ready uh, uh, today. Amen. Uh, uh, which church is this? <laughs> As we were praying just now, you know, one thing God placed in my spirit, there's a scripture, um, I believe it's in Jeremiah, it's, I don't want to say 24, 26, verse 16, but let me let you know what God has already done. The scripture goes something along the lines, it says, uh, no longer will they talk about and testify about the Passover and when the time I brought them out of Egypt. In fact, I believe it says that about three or four times somewhere in the scripture. It says, hey, no longer will they testify and talk about the time I brought them out of Egypt. And the message God was sending them in that verse is this. No longer will you talk about the old, that I, the old thing I did for you because I'm doing a new thing for you today. Because I've done a new thing for you today. Hear me. For everyone who came up here this moment. No longer will you testify something he used to do for you. You will testify for something he's about to do and has already done for you today. Oh, I thought you would receive that in your spirit like you know. You will testify for something he's about to do and has done for you today. Amen. Give God a shout of praise one more time. 
Hallelujah. Uh, can we clap for our, our G4C band and choir, please? And Jonelle, who did our opening prayer, please give her a clap offering, please. Amen, amen. God bless you all. Listen, we're here for a very good time, not a long time, very short time today. I think I need about 10 minutes to tell you what God wants me to tell you. Uh, uh, can you give us on the screen Hebrews 12 from verse 1 and 2? Hebrews 12, verse 1 and 2, so we can read it nice and loud together in this place. On the count of three, let's go. One, two, three, go. Since we are surrounded. race that God has set before us. Verse 2. Amen. Clap for yourself. Good job, reading. Good job. You tried. Good job. Uh, our message today, very quickly, is called They're Watching You. They're watching you. Say, hey, neighbor, uh, did you know that they're watching you right now? They're, they're watching you. Uh, let me quickly tell a story that I've told before here on this altar. Uh, it's a story that I'm not proud of, but, well, now that I know what God has been doing and what he's doing, I can say it freely. Um, I, I remember me coming into college, very nice, humble, young Christian boy. All right, hadn't done a single thing out of the lick of the law ever. Maybe lied, cheated, and stole before a little something. Uh, maybe. Uh, but, but, but didn't indulge in no sexual activity, no drugas, no, no crazy stuff, no nothing. And here I am walking onto this campus, uh, a, a new young football player, and, and, and I have these friends of mine, uh, teammates, and, and they're like, hey, listen, we're going to go to this party. All right, we're going we're gonna to hit up so-and-so and so-and-so and, so and be so-and-so with so-and-so doing so-and-so. And I said, well, I don't know about so-and-so because I don't do so-and-so. And, and, and I'm not about to do so-and-so and so because I'm a good Christian boy, and I don't, I don't indulge in that type of stuff. Years later, uh, about three or four, maybe four and a half years later, there's another young football player coming into our uh, program. I told you all the story before. And, and he, you know, he was hosted. Uh, we took him out to eat and everything. And, and um, uh, I think somebody asked him if he wanted to drink something or smoke something. And he says, no, I don't do that. I'm, I'm a good Christian boy, you know. And then this friend of mine, who's a roommate of mine, asked him. He said, okay, cool, sounds good. Have you heard, uh, do you know who Manny is? He said, yeah, I know Manny. You know, I watched him play. He went out to eat with me this other time. He said, yeah, good. Well, he said the exact same things when he first got here too. And we were able to turn him around. And when they told me that story, I laughed, like, oh, yeah, that's, that's funny. But I was like, dang, that is terrible. That is terrible. That, 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 that one could share a story like that and, 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 and make it seem like, hey, you know what? We saw him say one thing, and we were able to witness his life go a different way. They heard me say one thing and eventually saw that and witness that I started to live a certain other way. And here's the reality. Whether you realize it or not, based on the things you say and who you claim to be, people are watching if you live up to that. People are watching if you can maintain that. People are watching if that's truly who you say you are. How many people can be honest here today and, and be honest? If you knew you were being watched 24-7, there's some things you would do when you do when you're not being watched that you won't do. True or false? There, there, there's some things that you would do when you're not being watched that you probably wouldn't do because, you know what, okay, somebody's watching me. I have another great story. <laughs> you know, I grew up in New York, all right? And uh, if you're going to be a teacher in education in New York, you got to be tough. you got to be tough, especially back when I was growing up because we don't really care who you are. We're going to disrespect you until you take authority. We're going to disrespect you until you take authority. It's just that simple. And I remember we had this one teacher. I think he taught French uh, in, in, in my middle school. And there was a day where, you know, they were doing some evaluations for the teachers to check if they're doing the job and everything's going right. And this was a day he thought to, to, be a, uh, to stand his authority as a teacher. And he thought to take charge. And he thought to, 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 to do things because he was being watched that he's not accustomed to do and really lead his class. But let me tell you something. You don't do that with kids who's from New York City. We really don't care who's watching. We're going to act a fool. 
And that is the day since he tried to show he had power that he met the physical power of some of us students who actually fought him that day. Because hear me, you can't just start doing something you're not accustomed to doing just because people are now watching. So don't think you're going to be able to pray and live this life a certain way because people are now there seeing you do it if it's not something that you actually practice habitually. Makes sense. People are watching you. Do you know that? Do you know that people are watching you? I want that to truly marinate for you because the reality is this. <laughs> here, here, let, me, let me tell you this. Here's, here's the problem. Pe people are watching you, and you should get used to that. Right? Let me say it like that. People are watching you, and that's a good thing. Why? Because God has set your life up to be like that. Don't complain because people see you. Don't complain because people inquire about you. Don't complain because people have a, a people are curious of what's going on in your life. No, God has made you to be a light, and there's a reason why people are drawn to you. It's a reason why people are watching you, because your life is supposed to be lived in a certain manner or way that actually gives glory to God. Get used to it. People are watching you. It's, it's, it's just that simple. It's not something that you should be scared about, but something you should be aware of. So when people are watching you, the question is, what happens to them? When they watch you and they see you and they evaluate your life, do, do you live your life in such a way that they watch and see what happens when things go good, bad, wrong, or ugly, whatever the case is, and they say, wow, you know what? The way they handle things, the way they go through life, there's something that they have that I don't have. It's something that they do that I need to start doing. It's something that, that they know that I don't know. Hear me. People should be able to watch your life and desire your God even the more. And desire the God you serve so much more. People should be able to look at you as you struggle. Look at you as you succeed. And be like, man, I know that the God that they claim to serve is doing something so marvelous in their life that I now need to go figure out what that is about. When people watch your life, can they tell of your pursuit of God? When, when, when people watch your life, is there evidence, and I mean even the most mundane thing, is there evidence that you even attempt to walk with the Lord at all? And, and, and what we need to realize as Christians in the room, everyone's watching. I, I hope you do realize that everyone in your circles, even outside of this building, and even in this building, they're watching. And, and, and one thing we need to know, I'll say it like this. Um, all right, can, 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 can I tell you where Christians are, are, are losing the battle in the world? One, it starts with the people watching even amongst themselves here. And, and, and there are some people who are in your life who are watching you, watch this, just to anticipate the moment you fail. People who are watching you just waiting for the moment you fail. Waiting to say something so they can make noise with someone else about your life just because you failed, messed up, or made a mistake. And hear me, this happens so much within the body of Christ first. Like, like, like believers are failing at this inside the body, not even just outside. Where, where people are waiting, they're just so waiting especially when it comes to men and women of God. They're, they're, they're waiting for a moment for them to mess up or do something to now say something about them, to now say something about their ministry, to now say something about their church. Before, before any moment happens, before any uh, accusation happens, is, hey, you know what, that man and woman of God, oh, my gosh, they blessed me. They, they, they changed my life. Did you hear what they said that one week? It was amazing. The second something comes out, you know what, I, I always knew there was something there was some, I just couldn't put my finger on it, but there was just something off with him. There was just something off with the, the, what she said. You see the way she dressed? I just always knew. My spirit was never moved when they said anything. I couldn't put my finger on it, but now I got fingers to give them. This, this is what happens because, hey, people are always being watched. And they're waiting for a moment to say something out of line. Can, <laughs> can I be even more honest? You do realize this is a problem with the body of Christ, for the people on the outside looking in, that within our own body, we're so much more disconnected than anything else in the world. We have believers making money and spending and wasting a whole lot of time just to comment on other believers 24-7, that they're watching, not, not to be blessed, but to cause division. And, and, and this is what many believers are known for nowadays. 
This is how a lot of believers make a name for themselves nowadays by going ahead and speaking about others and the things that they see. Meanwhile, for the non-believing Christian, we look as divided as ever. Christians do more talking about Christians than those who are not Christians. Christians do more talking about Christians than those who are not Christians. And they wonder why people are running to go be Muslim instead of serving your God. You wonder why pe people are running to any other religion because, well, at least, I'm, at least they're not fake. At, at least they're not fake. It's like, <laughs> that's like broadcasting your family business everywhere for people to see and wonder why nobody wants to come to your house for holidays. We, we can't trust your family. We, 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 we can't trust who you are. You, you, you broadcast all your issues and all your problems. Somebody said to me, um, what day was that? I think the, um, I don't know why y'all laughing. Who's that? <laughs> I, I posted a video of my, uh, uh, I posted a video this Friday, I think, about, about my siblings. Said, you know, it was National Sibling Day this past week. And I said, hey, I got the best siblings in the world. I love them to death. Somebody asked me, who's my favorite? I said, none of them, one. But, but, but someone asked me, oh, but... There's no way you can love them. You know, they're not perfect. And I'm just like, no, they're definitely not perfect. But in their imperfections, God is perfecting something in me through them. And, and, and watch this. Now, now, too many people like to look at their situations and the things that they see from others, even within their family, like their body of Christ family, and make it something to make a big issue on and broadcast family issues, not realizing, hey, maybe God's trying to do something through me with or through them in me, and I should be learning what God is actually saying to me in this moment. Realize what God is trying to do to you then instead of what you can do in any type of demeaning way. Man, we had a church member once. I can say it because it's a long time ago. Y'all don't know who it is, but some of my siblings might. They had a church member once. Can you believe? True story. She, she, uh, she was a young lady. Her brother was here, uh, 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 and her mother was here as well, going to our church. I'm not sure exactly what happened. But she got on social media and started on her story going crazy, talking a whole lot of stuff, saying, man, her brother's this, this, that, and the third. Y'all should not talk to him. He's a rapist. He did this, that, blah, 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 and airing out all types of family drama online on the internet. Now, now you tell me, is that the type of family you want to step into? Would, would, would you be comfortable going over to that family's house for the holidays? I'll be a little bit tense if I'm supposed to be welcomed into this family because one, I can't trust you. Two, it seems a whole, it, it seems real messy. Three, I'm not even sure if y'all love or like each other. There, there, there's a whole lot going on. And for those of us who were watching that story that day, it, it got ugly. And we knew we'd see them the next day in church and we didn't know what to say. We didn't know what to do. Hear me, that's how the body of Christ looks. Too many Christians wasting time talking about their own brothers and sisters, airing out drama that shouldn't be aired out, and it makes what people see of us look bad. Everybody's watching. Everybody is watching. <laughs> and, 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 and hear me, this will also make some people struggle in sharing the gospel. Struggle in actually bringing people to church or struggle in actually bringing people to Christ. Because you spend more time at work talking about your church drama than what you learned on the altar that day. And then you're like, hey, you know what? Come to my church. I don't know if I want to. I don't know if I want to. I've heard what you've been saying the last three weeks. So what's the face over there? Why would I want to come to that place? You do realize people are watching. And the way you live your life speaks volumes. The way you live your life speaks about, I mean, I've, so many people have preached what I'm about to say so many times is, you know, you might be the only Bible people read, right? And, um, and they may not be in your face reading you, but hey, they're reading you from a distance. They're, they're, they're reading and watching everything you do and everything you say. People are watching, hear me, how you go, this is the biggest thing I need you to understand. People are watching how you go through problems. People are watching how you go through your own struggles. People are watching exactly how you go through praising your God when things don't go well to see if you're truly about what you say you are about. From watching your life, let me just say like this, what can people say about God? And people are watching you 24-7, not just when you come out here and you know you got your hands lifted and it's worthy is your name and everybody's crying. That's cool. I'm not against it. I'm for that, for real. But, 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 but when you're in the real gritty of it all, 
and we're watching how you walk with and say about God, can we glorify God in what you do? Can we glorify God in what you say? That's what made, um, what's this guy's name? I just lost his name. That's what made Apostle Paul really different. I mean, this man was in chains, in jail, and writing scriptures that you still read today. In, in, in his moment down in the dumps, I'm not even going to lie to you. I don't think that's me at all. If I'm going through it, you won't even know because you probably just won't hear from me. Don't even reach out to me. I'm not going to pick up your phone. I'm not going to message back. I, I'm, I got things. I'm, I'm struggling over here. They're, 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 and, 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 and don't take this the wrong way. I'm not saying, hey, don't be real and, and come to God's house and, you know, and, and, uh, and, and fake emotions just so people don't know what you're going through. But there should be a level of, of man, I couldn't even tell you were going through that because of what I saw you give to God when you got here. It should be a level of, of, of joy and exuberance and even uh, uh, understanding of who he is in faith that makes us realize, wow, you went through those type of struggles like that? Then, then, then what am I complaining about? As, as I watch your life, can I look at my own life and be like, man, I need to do better for the Lord. I need to do better as I go through day to day. I, I need to do better in my pursuit of him. Can I watch your life and be inspired for my walk or even come close to God? There's a story. Um, uh, what's his name? I'm, oh, Smith Wigglesworth. All right, Smith Wigglesworth. I'm not sure if you know him. He's a, he's a very well-known man of God. He, he passed away some time ago. There's uh, the story of how he came to Christ. All right, and he came to Christ through his wife. Uh, his wife would go to church every single day. His wife would go to church all the time, spend so much time in the house of God, and he would literally be so upset. Like, yo, you're never home. Like, you're always in church up until these late hours doing God so, doing, doing who knows what. And he would literally be upset that, man, you're, like, she's always in the house of God. It's a problem. To the point where he said, you know what? I'm going to change the locks and lock you out of the house if you go to church one more time and be in that church that late again. And guess what? He did it. He locked his wife out the house. She came home and she was knocking on the door and he let her in. And she slept outside, right outside their house, that door, literally. You read the story. The story's all over the place. And, and, and it must have been cold that night because the story says she's like, when he, when he opened the door, she's like shivering. And she pretty much falls into the house because she was leaning on the door. And she gets up and she says, hey, good morning, honey. honey what do you want to eat for breakfast? And that's what she said. That was her response. And he said that convicted him so much because there's no way she could have went through what she went through and still have a voice, still have a posture that was so honorable and respectful to him, even though he's the one that caused her pain. Even though he, even though he was the one who literally put in a position where, like, I mean, let's be honest, if that was any one of y'all, some of y'all going real crazy when he opened that door. So, y'all, we're going to see a side of y'all we've never seen before. I'm looking at some of y'all right now, and I know you going to go crazy. And she goes, good morning, honey. What do you, what do you, what do you want to eat for breakfast? How crazy is that? But, but, but hear me. Like we said these last couple weeks, your response is everything. Your response is everything. Your response is everything. Everything. I'm going to say this again till God tells me to stop saying it. How will you respond in this season now? Can he trust you to have the right response that would draw men unto him? Does your response lift him up? That's what scripture says. If, if I be lifted up, I would draw all men to it. Does your response lift him up in such a way that, man, people must be drawn to God as they watch you? It's imperative. Again, I'll say it again. People are watching you, and it's not for no reason. <laughs> people, people, people are watching you, and people have their eye on you because God has favored you. God literally drew attention to Job and said, yo, say it. Have you seen Job? I, I, I can put my back on him. I, I, I can trust him. No matter what we throw at him, watch his response. It will be admirable. It will be honorable. As you watch him go through every struggle and tribulation, as you watch him even go through success, watch your response to me. And I think that's the biggest challenge. That's, that, that, that's truly the biggest challenge. Can, can, can you live your life in such a way that as people are watching you, 
Because though you do not know it, I'm going to say it again, they are 100% watching you. Once you say you, you love the Lord, you're a believer, you put that target on your back. I say target because it's not a bad thing, truly. But they're watching to see, hey, how will you respond? Watching to see, hey, what will you say? They're watching to see, hey, are you going to be about the business you say you are about? They're watching you. And that being watched has so, has so much impact. Has, 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 has too much power. Daniel chapter 6, verse 10 and 11 says this. But when Daniel learned that the law had been signed, he went home and knelt down as usual in his upstairs room with his windows open towards Jerusalem. He prayed three times a day as he always has done, giving thanks to God. Then the officials went together to Daniel's house and found him praying and asking, God, asking, uh, asking for God's help. Let me tell you why I share this. We all know the story of Daniel, a uh, favored man, served three kings. And um, the, these same people we see here, these officials right here, they plotted to get Daniel in, into the lion's den because they knew he would pray to his God and it just got annoying to them. So they set up a law that, hey, next time he's praying, as they are watching him pray, they will confirm he's praying and make sure he gets locked up. Daniel, learning this law does what he does every single day. That Daniel 6 verse 10 is low-key one of my favorite verses. As usual, he gets down and kneels three times per day and just prays to God and give God all the glory. And the one thing I need you to realize is this from that story. It really doesn't matter who's watching. That, that's, that, that's first things first. It does not matter who's watching. Yet, yet there are people you now, now you know there's some people in your life who are actually watching you right now, waiting for you to fail. I can't be the only one, true or false. I can't, I know I'm not the only one. Now, hear me, we don't care. I mean, I just I said it to, to, to one of our sisters here before. We, we don't care. We know they're watching. I don't care. It doesn't, it doesn't change my day. It should never change what you do on the day to day. Yeah, they're watching. Do what you're supposed to do with God. Daniel said, hey, as usual, do you want me not to pray? I'm just going, I'm, I'm going to pray. I'm, I'm going to do as I do because the, it doesn't matter who's watching at all. It does not matter at all the demeanor, the posture, what you're supposed to give to God, give it to God. Yes, they're watching, so what? Now, now pause, let me reverse that. Because for some of us, because people are watching, we, we don't want to move. Because people are watching, we don't want to do. Because people are watching, the thing God's been waiting for us to do, write the book, start the business, say whatever, join whatever, make this place. Because we think, oh my gosh, everyone's watching. Hey, they're, they're supposed to. We still don't care. We'll do what God said. They're supposed to watch. We literally don't care. We're going to do what God said. The people watching does not change anything. Those watching should not change what you do. Those watching and those not watching should not change what we do. Man, I want to, I can't, I don't want to go in that direction because my time is going short. But I really want to, I really want to make sure that makes sense. I mean, so many times you stop yourself from doing what God has ordained and called you to do because you're scared of those who are watching. And then you're scared of those who are watching and also those, those who are not watching. You're scared because people are watching and you're scared because people are not watching. What are you doing? Whether they watch or not, and they see or not, it does not matter. Do as he's called you to do. Amen. And realize as you move, the impact of what you do has power. That's the, that's the thing I really, uh, that's all I need you, need you to know today. Because those out there are watching, whether in the body or outside of the body, because, yes, they are watching, your response is everything. It is extremely important because your response will either prove who God is or not. Your response will either prove that he reigns or he doesn't. Your response will either prove that this life is doable as a believer or it's impossible. Because if they see that, hey, you can go through it and do it well, then they believe that they can do it well too. It's that simple. And, 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 and I'll use Daniel's story as I'm trying to close. I'll continue on with that story in the book of Daniel. Verse 18, I, and, and just watch how beautiful this is. Daniel served three kings. This is the third king that Daniel, Daniel served. This king, case in point, was not a king who served Christ, that served the God of Israel. Daniel chapter 6, verse 18. Then the king returned to his palace and spent the night fasting. 
He refused his usual entertainment and couldn't sleep at all that night. Very early in the morning, the king got up and hurried out to the lines then. When he got there, he called out in anguish, Daniel, servant of the living God, was your God whom you serve so faithfully able to rescue you from the lions? Just wait and pause. This guy loved Daniel so much, knew Daniel was a believer, knew he served the God that he did not serve. Give us that verse 18 again, please. And because he made the decree that he didn't realize was against Daniel, he spent the night that he was in that lion's den fasting and praying and seeking Daniel's God on behalf of Daniel. Fasting and seeking Daniel's God on behalf of Daniel. And then verse 20, he says, Daniel, did your God, who you love and serve faithfully so much, did he save you from the lion's den? I mean, I mean, I mean see what the response is to someone who you know lived and served God faithfully. And what? He doesn't just... Thank you, Holy Spirit. He doesn't fast and pray for the sake of fast and praying and because it's Daniel. No, because it's, it's something he's seen Daniel do time and time again as he watched Daniel. He watched Daniel not just say but serve his God properly. And now when Daniel's in his place of need, he stops and says, you know what? I need to intercede for Daniel. I mean, I don't know about y'all, but respectfully to you, you need to be somebody at the place of work where people come to you because they know that you serve Christ. They may not serve him at all, but they just say, hey, listen, um, I know you do this and that for God. I need you to pray for me. Talk to your God for me, please, because right now I'm going through something, and it is crazy. A couple of months ago, there that happened with one of my coworkers. <laughs> no, I'm not going to tell you the story. Let me sit to it. But just know <laughs> that you need to be a person that, that those who don't even know him, Know that you know him, may not serve him, but trust what you will say to him because the way you live your life and what he's done for you. Amen. Let's continue with this story. Verse 21, Daniel answered, Long live the king. My God has sent his angel to shut the lion's mouth so that they would not hurt me, for I have been found innocent in his sight, and I have not wronged you, your majesty. The king was overjoyed in order that Daniel be lifted from the den. Now the scratch was found on him, for he had trusted in his God. Then the king gave orders to arrest the men who had maliciously accused Daniel. He had them thrown into the lion's den along with their wives and children. That's crazy. The lion leaped on them and tore them apart before they even hit the floor of the den. That's crazy. But here's verse 25. Then King Darius sent the message to the people of every race and nation and language throughout the world. Peace and prosperity to you. I decree that everyone throughout my kingdom should tremble with fear before the God of Daniel, for he is the living God, and he will endure forever. His kingdom will never be destroyed, and his rule will never end. Come on, somebody. He rescues and saves his people. He performs miraculous signs and wonders in the heavens and the earth. He has rescued Daniel from the power of the lions. They're watching you. And those with such high voices, those with great power, they're watching you. And if you could just respond the way God knows you can respond, then something like this can happen. Please give me verse 25 again. How crazy is it? I didn't even realize how deep this verse is. I just read it. He, he sent this message to people of every race and nation and language throughout the world. He sent this to people he didn't even know. And just said, yo, I just need you to know about this guy named Daniel and the God that he serves. He is the true living God. It, are you living your life in such a way that people who are watching you just have to talk about the God that you serve without you saying a word? Just living life, just going through struggle, just going through problem, just responding how he's asked you to respond. And, and it's so crazy because... I'm seeing God, I'm seeing the reason why God say, hey, it's all about your response. I'm seeing that in my life, truly. And, 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 and he's been harboring and saying, honestly, for this time to me since January. Um, and I'm noticing, man, it's, it's really everything. The way you respond is everything. Your response has an impact to this magnitude. Your response has the impact to this level. You never know who is watching you, waiting just to see you fail and fall. But the moment they see you succeed, they're like, you know what? I can't do this anymore. I mean, there's been so many stories. I'll close with this. Uh, uh, th there's been so many stories. <laughs> okay, let me say it properly so people don't know who it is and stuff. Uh, th there's been so many stories 
where, where people have plotted against men and women of God, like literally, you know, trying to, I mean, true stories. People trying to, try to feed them poison, right? Let me give you a true story, but I'm not going to put no names. Uh, there, 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 there's, there's a church member who, who wants to cook for a, a man of God and uh, uh, gives him food. He doesn't eat it. But, but the next week comes and checks, hey, you know, did you enjoy, you know, the so-and-so I cooked for you? Oh, yes, it was awesome. Thank you. Next week again, make, makes him something else to eat. Uh, uh, did, did, did you enjoy the food I gave for you? Uh, I did. Yeah, thank you. In fact, I'm telling the story wrong. Sorry. The man of God was actually eating the food. He was actually eating the food. Hey, did, did you enjoy what I made for you? Yes, thank you. It was amazing. It was great. This happened for about two months. And then the person came out during one service, knelt down and cried and said, you know what, I had to confess. For the last two months, I've been trying to poison and kill you. And, and, and you've been telling me you've been eating the food and I've been excited. And every time you come back, I'd be so confused on why you're not dead. I'd be so confused on why you're not hurt. I'd be so confused on what we've been plotting against you is not working. It must be this God that you serve. I am done playing these games. I am done serving all these tricks. I'm giving my life to Christ. Hear me. Be somebody that the way your life goes, no matter what they're plotting against you, you walk with God in such a way. You trust God in such a way. Let me go back to that scripture to make it make sense to you for why this happened to Daniel. The, verse 23, the king was overjoyed in order that Daniel be lifted from the den. Now the scratch was found on him, for he had trusted in his God. Trust in God in such a way that as people are watching your life and seeing how you live, no matter how they feel about you, they just had to go deeper with God. They just had to confess to God. They just had to surrender to God because the way your life is going, the way you respond, the way you behave, the way you rejoice, the way you give him glory, even in trial and tribulation and during success, is too much for somebody who doesn't know God. It's too much for somebody who's being lukewarm. It's too much for someone who's confused. It's too much for someone who is emotional, who's angry, who's upset. At this point, they, just, they need to just give up and serve the God that you serve. That's the impact. This is my last thing. I'll say this. That's the impact God's given you. If you don't know, that's the impact God's given you. And it takes you responding properly once to see it. It takes you responding properly consistently to see it. And whether you even see it or not, because you don't see all who is watching, it takes that one time to have an impact in someone else's life. Amen? Amen. Let's stand up and pray. I, I, I want you to, to, to simply thank God for the position he's placed you in. I say that because through any trial and tribulation and for any moment of confusion and for anything you're going through in life, we never really know what God's working out. We never really know what God's trying to do. We never know how he's trying to use us. I used to say this when we first started this ministry. Uh, we're all just microscopic cogs in God's catastrophic plan. But he wants us in the right place at the right time, doing the right thing with the right, uh, right people, getting the right results. And that happens from having the right response. But also trusting that even when I lose, I win. That also trusting that even when it does not seem to be going right, trust me, it really is. And it's working out something for those who are watching to the glory of God. It's working out something for those who are watching and those who, those who know to the glory of God. So I first want you to thank God for every reason why you think you should not thank God. For the family he bore you into. For, for the way you grew up. For everything that you did not have and thought you needed, I want you to thank God for how he shaped you to getting here in this moment right now. And in your thanking him, you're really saying, hey, you know what? I'm, tr I'm trusting that it all happened for a reason. I'm trusting that even my, re my response that I needed back then up till now has given you glory. Go ahead and thank God. Thank God in this place. Go ahead and pray. And thank him for every single blessing. Thank him for every single struggle. Thank him for every single moment of confusion. Thank him for everything that did not make sense in your life even up till now. And just thank God for how he has shifted and moved in your life. Come on, pray, pray, pray. Pray, pray, pray. Let him hear you. Let him hear your voice. Lord, we just thank you.
Father, we just thank you. Even in the moments where it did not make sense, God, you threw us into some lion's dens. Lord, you threw us into some fiery furnaces. God, it looked like impossible situations. Lord, it looks impossible right now, but I thank you because you're doing a work within me. God, I thank you because you're using me for somebody else. God, I thank you because you are completely in control, and I'm trusting you even in the now. Come on, pray. Pray, 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 pray. Pray, 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 pray. Pray, 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 pray. Zo prali genusko to ramande. Za prali genusko to ramande de ramando. Za prala genusko to ramande de ramanda. Zo prali genusko to ramanda. Zo prali genusko to ramande de ramando. In Jesus' name we pray. Hear me, I'm going to say this again. Don't be confused. I said it earlier. Yes, the message is called They're Watching You. But again, it does not matter who's watching. It does not matter who's watching, or it shouldn't matter who's watching to you. Because of who you are and what you are and what you have with him is a certain response and posture that you must always have. I go back to that Daniel 6.10 because it's so deep and profound. They told Daniel, listen, if you pray again, yo, you're going to die. If you do this again, man, you're, you're going to, to the lines then. And Daniel said, hey, I do this every single day. This is, what, this is what I always do because it does not matter what people say. It does not matter who's watching. It does not matter what plan of attack that they have for you. Because of who God is and your trust in him, he will not fail you. So I want you to pray, Father, the place where I'm lacking trust and faith, because of who's watching or who's not watching, Lord, strengthen me today. Help my faith stand firm, that I just have a posture that is unchangeable. I have a posture that's unshakable. I have a disposition that will never change, no matter if the rain comes or the wind comes, because you truly are my foundation. I don't just sing it to sing it, God. I truly mean it. God, God, help me, O oh Lord, to not care about the, the details of the problem. Help me to not care about the details of the situation. Help me to not care, O oh God, about how it, how it is currently shaped, O oh Lord. I have a trust in you. I have a faith in you. I have a dependency on you, O oh God. In the name of Jesus. Zo pranige dushko to ramande. Za pranaga dushko to ramande ramando. Zo pranaga dushko to ramanda. In Jesus' name I pray. Hear me. I was talking to a good friend of mine yesterday, and, and, and I was telling him this, that one of my new definitions for grace is just being fully dependent on God. Grace is just being fully dependent on God. And I, I truly believe that is what we need to learn how to do. It's going to look different for me as it looks for you. But learn how to be truly dependent on God and what you're going through. Um, Daniel and his friends, Daniel for the lion's den, uh, Hananiah, Azariah, and Mishael for the furnace, they had to depend on God because literally they were put in situations that they had no control of. They had to be fully dependent on God for every outcome. Learn to elevate the way you depend on God. I want that to be your, your prayer. Father, help me to depend on you in a new way. Help me to depend on you in a greater way. That I receive grace, O oh Lord. That I walk in your divine power. That I walk in your divine strength. That I am fully dependent on who you are for my situation. No matter where I'm thrown into, no matter what's thrown my way, Father, I need to learn to be dependent on you today. Lord, help me to depend on you newly. Help me to depend on you greater than I have before. Help me to depend on you, O oh God, in the manner that is pleasing to you. Help me to depend on you, O oh God, in the manner, God, that gives you glory, that gives you honor, that gives you praise. Come on, make that your prayer as you receive grace right now in this moment. Make that your prayer. Father, we want to depend on you, O oh God, at a greater capacity. We want to depend on you, O oh God, in a greater way. In the name of Jesus. So, pralaganosko. To Ramande, Za Prelege Nusko to Ramande de Ramanda, Zo Pranige Dusko to Ramanda, pray, 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 Zo Pranige Dusko to Ramande, Za Pralaga Nusko to Ramanda, in Jesus' name we pray. Last prayer is this uh, one day the Lord will let me preach the message on living a life of significance. I'm waiting for the day, but, but that's the prayer I want you to pray. Daniel lived his life in such a significant way that those who did not serve his God 
fasted on his behalf. Those who did not serve his God but was watching him go through a struggle and tribulation that seemed impossible and watch him come out and give God glory now began to be the greatest apostles and preach the message of Christ for him. His life was so significant, his light shone, uh, shined so bright, though his belief and trust in God was so firm that those who had no clue who this God was preached God for him. That is a life of significance. I want you to pray, Lord, let my life be a life that is significant unto you in every manner, in every way, in every way that I respond. Let my life be a life that draws significance unto you, that it in itself is a life of significance. God, a life that points to you and gives you glory and gives you honor. Father God, change me today right now. Renew my mind right now that every aspect of me, O oh Lord, gives you praise. Lord, may people look to me as I go through trial and tribulation May people look to me as I go through the struggles, the ups and downs of life. And Father, may they just come to know you better. May they desire to know you better. May they seek your face more, oh God, simply because of how significant I am. Simply because of how significant you've made me, oh God, and how I have endured in life. Lord, grant me that grace. Grant me that grace for those who are watching, oh God, to desire you more. For those who are watching, oh God, to want you more. For those who are watching, oh Oh God, to want to know you more in the name of Jesus. Father, we cannot do without you, O Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Hear me, I want you to know this before we pray this last prayer. Because what you're praying <laughs> is for a situation you cannot handle, but you'll need God for to get through it. What you're praying is for God to put the spotlight on you just so people can see the way you respond and give him glory. Hear me. If you're going to pray, which you already pray, but as we're going to pray for God to distinguish you, know that Job was distinguished and God pointed and said, hey, Satan, look at my servant Job and do what you can and try to do what you can and watch his response unto me because he was distinguished. Because he knew that he can trust and lean on to him. I want you to pray this last prayer. Father, distinguish me in this time now. I want you to depend on me. I want you to, to call out to me. To be a vessel that you can trust with any assignment. To be a vessel that gives your life glory. To be a vessel that gives your name glory. Father, distinguish me in my time now. Distinguish me in my generation. Come on, go ahead and pray. Zo pradegedosko to Ramanda. Lord, distinguish me even in the now. God, distinguish me, O oh Lord. Put your spotlight on me. Lord, put your finger on me. Put your breath of life on me, O oh God, that my life may be a life that gives you glory. Lord, put your finger on me. Let your presence envelop me. Let your angels, O oh God, be there for me, that my life is a life marked by you, O oh Lord, to give you glory. Distinguish on high, oh God, to give you glory as a light and salt to the world, to give you glory in the name of Jesus. Thank you, King of Glory. In Jesus' name we pray. And with every head bowed and every eyes closed, quite simply, yes, they're watching, everyone's watching, and even those watching or not, like I said, there are things you may do where you know people are not watching that Maybe make you even question how much you know God. Maybe make you even question if you're walking with the Lord, if you know him at all. And for those who feel like they don't know him today or want to get to a place where they can know him again, we want to give you that chance. We want to give you that moment. So with every head bowed and every eyes closed, and you want to rededicate and give your life to Christ, I want you to go ahead and raise your hand in this moment. I want you to, to, to raise your hand and give your life anew and afresh unto God as he has even already marked you in this place. Hallelujah. 
Amen. Father God, we thank you, Lord. Lord, we praise your holy name. God, we thank you for the opportunity of life, for the gift of life, God, for the gift of salvation. Lord, as we are all standing here today, children of the Most High God, God, we receive fresh grace in the name of Jesus. God, we receive new strength in the name of Jesus. Father God, give us all we need, O Lord, to walk firmly with you in this time in the name of Jesus. Lord, as people watch, exit, and enter our life to and fro, may they see the glory of God. May they encounter the light of God. May they encounter the power of God through us in the name of Jesus. Lord, strengthen us with every trial and tribulation. Father God, that you may be praised, that you may be magnified, that you may be lifted in our life in the name of Jesus. Lord, cause our lives to be lives that draw all men to you, that draw all men to you in the name of Jesus. And Father, as we behold your face, may we continue to become more like you daily. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, somebody. Give God a shout of praise. Oh, come on. Give him a shout of praise in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Please go ahead and take your seats in this place as we transition to tight end offering. And can you please clap for Anaya as she'll be leading us in that today. Amen. Good afternoon, G4C. All right, so before we move on to our tithe and offering, let's just take a moment to give honor to Minister Manny for that powerful word, for seeking the face of God for us every single week. Continue to give him honor, amen. So we are now moving on to the tithe and offering portion of today's service. As we know, tithe is 10% of all of our increase, and an offering is anything that you give in addition out of your heart for the love that you have for God. It says in 1 Kings 3 that, so, um, Solomon, he loved the Lord, and because he loved the Lord, he gave to him. It says in Proverbs 3 and 9, Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruit of all thine increase. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. So the various ways of giving are to my left and to my right on the screen. And if you have a physical offering, you can look at the chair before you, and it has an envelope in it. Does everybody have their offering ready? Amen. So let's pray. Father God, we come into your presence in the name of Jesus, and we just say thank you. Lord, we thank you for this time of giving. We thank you for the Father that you have been unto us. Lord, we ask in the name of Jesus that these offerings would be acceptable in your sight and you would cover them with your blood. And I pray that the increase, Father God, that everyone has today over their the expectation, rather, God, that your children have over their offering, Father God, that it will be granted unto them in the name of Jesus. As you said in the book of Malachi, Father God, may the devourer be rebuked for their sake in the name of Jesus as they give this covenant giving unto you. Father, we bless you, we thank you, and we magnify your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. To see you, see you high and lifted up. To shine and shine in the light of, light of your glory. Come on, pour, down. pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. Shining in the light of your glory, pour out your power and love as we sing holy, 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 I want to see you. Amen. Give it up for the G4C choir. <laughs> So we are now moving on to the announcements. Ladies of G4C, our lock-in is going to be on May 9th, oh, 17th at 9 p.m. So let's give it up for that. Amen. So please tap in. I want to see every lady here, there. All right? And this Thursday, we are going to be having um, a college outreach with the evangelism team. Yes, you guys can give it up for that. Hey, Ben, York College. So we're going to be meeting here at 10 a.m., but the um, outreach evangelism portion of that service is going to be from 11 to 2. We do still need um, volunteers, so you guys can go to either Grace or Neva today if you guys are interested in volunteering for that. And are there any first-time worshipers here with us today? If it's your first time here at a G4C service, please signify that by raising your hand. Amen. 
Give her a round of applause. So if you look to the back, we have our lovely welcome team, and they're ready for you. So you can just um, stand up, and they'll help you out real quick. Continue to clap for her. All right, so we're now going to welcome Minister Manny back with the closing benediction. <laughs> Amen. Can y'all clap for Anaya one time, please? Come on. We thank God for that time of giving and receiving in this house. Uh, yeah, real quick, I'm just going to reiterate one announcement that she mentioned. Uh, this Thursday, uh, the G4C evangelism team is going to your college. Make some noise again, please. Uh, this is this is uh, this is a, a, a step in the in the right direction of what we're trying to do here in this ministry of G4C and ALCC. Hear me. We have a mandate to win souls. Period. We have a mandate to go out for souls. Period. We have a mandate to have an impact on people's lives, and that's what we're doing this Thursday. So uh, I believe we're still, we still need more volunteers. Is there anybody who, who can volunteer today who's not volunteering? You can raise your hand. This Thursday, it'll be at 11 a.m. from 11 to 2 pretty much. I know we're going to meet here maybe a little bit before that. But if you're someone who can do that and you're here already, you just raise your hand. If not, if you want to think about it, please reach out to those leaders. All right, we need more people to volunteer as we want to be an impact. I know we have some York College students, so <laughs> you're going to be there on Thursday, right? Oh, okay, okay. Maybe clap, clap for her, clap for her, clap for her. I did set her up to see. Yeah, so listen, this, this is one school of many, and this is one college, and we, we, there's a high school we're about to team up with that we spoke to this morning. All right, we're, we're really going to go out for doing God's work in, edu in these places of education. I don't want to preach again, but y'all do realize that in the education field, we need Christ more than anything right now, right? Okay. So, so, so let's make sure we're doing our assignments there and keep it in prayer. If you can't volunteer, please, if you're here and hearing me, keep us in prayer as we go out this Thursday. We need it. We all here depend on God's grace. So we need that as we're going to be an impact for his kingdom on that day. Amen. Amen. Let's stand up as we go home today. Amen. Have you been blessed today by God's word? Have you been blessed by the encounter of God? I'm going to repeat that one thing. God said, no longer will you testify of what I used to do because he's doing something new. That is a word for me today, and you will testify in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's share the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. And surely his goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life, and we shall abide in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. AOCC 2024, it's my year. You sound amazing, and remember, it's your story for his glory. Peace. <laughs>